Hello, and welcome to Apollo 18, Mission to the Moon, on the Commodore 64. And this, well it says it was released in 87, but uh, certainly in the UK it came out in 88, and was released by EA on behalf of Accolade. And because, uh, you know, it was developed in North America, where they all use disk drives, uh, this, this is pretty much a disk based product. Uh, Quite a hefty multi-load. Uh, I have True Drive emulation turned off just for this uh, review, uh, just to speed up the loading. Um, if you're playing on a real 64, it does work uh, pretty well with a fast load cartridge. I would definitely recommend using one of those if you're going to play it on, a, on real hardware. Um, do not play the cassette version. Uh, I own the cassette version and the multi-load is horrendous. Uh, don't even think about playing it. Um, but uh, let's get started. So the idea is that you take off in your rocket, uh, head towards the moon, land on the moon, do a moonwalk, then take off, head back, and do a spacewalk, and then land back on Earth. Um, so it's quite a, a bit to the game. Uh, one of the uh, when I reviewed uh, Space Shuttle: A Journey into Space a few games back, uh, one of the criticisms I had of the game was that uh, there wasn't much variety, um, and certainly in, th in this game. Uh, there's quite a bit. Right, so let's get started. So it says proceed to telemetry. So press T to head to the telemetry screen. And there's there's no skill or judgment involved in these screens. It's just a case of using the cursor keys and return to make your way through all the settings and just change them till they're all green. And then it's good to go. Um, yeah, these screens are here just pretty much just for atmosphere and maybe a bit of info. Um, and I'm glad they are here because the, the manual itself, uh, certainly the manual for the cassette version, it's, I don't know what the disc version is like, maybe it's better, but the cassette version manual is pretty basic. It doesn't really give much background at all. And it's quite disappointing, especially compared to the manual for Space Shuttle, A Journey into Space. But um, yeah, so the game really relies on these screens and the speech and the graphics in general to generate the atmosphere. And to be fair, the atmosphere is, is pretty good in this game. I think it's one of the best features in it. So everything's good to go. So press fire. And now we're good to go. Now this is a really tricky sequence. This is probably the hardest sequence in the game. Uh, I don't know why they made the first sequence in the game so hard. And it's probably put a lot of people off trying to uh, get into the game. But uh, the idea is that... Um, well, let me, let me just explain here. Uh, on the status panel on the right hand side where it says error, uh, at various stages through the launch a red bar will appear. And all you have to do is press fire when the bar is as close to the red line as possible. It's a bit like the swingometer uh, in, in leaderboard. Um, and after a few um, runs of that, the uh, spin indicator, or roll indicator, sorry, the roll indicator comes into play. And that's just to the left there, there's a little gauge with a red line through it, and all you do is push left and right to keep it as centralised as possible. And on the left hand edge is a little radar, and you can see your rocket rise up, and it should be as close to the middle as possible, in order to achieve the correct altitude for um, the orbit. Right, let's get started. Now, it's really hard, so I'll be surprised if I do it first time. Oh, that's pretty good. That wasn't so good. Uh, it's, I mean, it's a little more than a reaction test. And a lot of stages in, in this, uh, are, they are really just reaction games. So now the uh, roll indicator comes into play. Let's see if we just try and keep it as centralised as possible. But it's pretty hard to keep an eye on that and the error gauge at the same time. There's some really nice animation in, in, the, in the screen in the middle but you can't watch it while you're playing the game because you're too busy uh, focusing on the error gauge. Ah, that was not so good. That may have cost me that. Yeah, so, the errors accumulate and if you've got too many at the end of the stage then Unfortunately, you wouldn't have achieved the correct altitude. I was doing alright until there. 
Oh, that's not so good. So, that was a bit of a failure, that one. And I could do the whole video again, but uh, I'm not going to because I tried to record this video about 10 times yesterday and had the same uh, same result. It's just so difficult uh, at this stage. So I've actually done a bit of a blue peter and created a safe state in the emulator which I've just loaded. Uh, so we'll say that I've completed that screen and we'll go to the next one. And in between stages we get this little screen that shows us this how far we've progressed in the mission, so we've just taken off. So back to the telemetry, we're in the command module here, and what we need to do is pretty much um, separate from the main rocket, turn around and dock with the lunar module. So let's put out all these things. I'm not, I mean, I don't know what all these things mean, obviously, but uh, uh, there's clearly been some attention to detail. Right, so now, we, now the computer's activated, so at the top says program, and all you do is run the appropriate program, so we're running program number one. And then we're going to fire the engine just so we can come out of the uh, rocket and turn round. Yeah, so this was made by Artec, the same guys that did Ace of Aces, um, Killed Until Dead and The Train. All great games, but also games with hefty multi-loads. Uh, to be fair, it's not their fault. You know, it's pretty much a disc-based culture over in North America, and uh, you know these guys tried to make games, you know, to take full advantage of that, and, and they didn't really design them for uh, us poor cassette-based UK users. So we tended to get either stripped-down games or games with really bad multi-loads. But it is what it is. Right, so now we're going to turn round, and the panels will open on the uh, rocket. That's quite a smart sequence here, some nice graphics. And overall, the, I think graphics in the game are pretty great. Right, so here's where we have to dock with the lunar module, and it's just a case of guiding the... It's just moving up and down left, right, to sort of guide the tube and press fire to apply some braking, so we don't dock too fast. And some little gauges at the top, they help you. Keep track. Just press fire to apply a bit of braking thrust. There we go, docked first time. It's not that hard, that sequence. Now, it's a bit like the real missions. Uh, if you make a mistake at some point, then you might not be able to carry out every single mission. They might just have to make, bring you back early. If you say you can't land on the moon, you've just got to come back. Um, that's fine on disc, but if you play the cassette version, yeah, it means turning the tape over and rewinding. Um, cause it can be slightly non-linear from that point of view, unless you manage to do every single step properly. Uh, I'm unlikely to manage to do everything properly in this review. I mean, I couldn't even do the first stage properly. But uh, I'll try and show you as much of the game as I can. So, I'll just secure. And... 
just pulling out of the rocket now. And we're going to deorbit. And that there'll be a, a mid course correction. And all that happens here is the computer calculates how much thrust to apply, and where it says time at the top underneath, but at the top just slightly to the middle, where it says burn, it says time. Some numbers will appear there, and as soon as you start rolling, you just let go of the fire button. Um, if you take too long, then you'll be some overflow, and you'll have to do another burn. And you've obviously only got so much fuel, so it's best to try and do it in as few burns as possible. So it's just pressing fire once the countdown starts, then letting go as soon as the numbers start to roll in the time indicator. And that's not too bad. Yeah, it's really just a reaction uh, thing again. Uh, If you've got slow reactions, then uh, you're not going to get very far in this game, to be honest. Right, so, we're off to the moon. Right, so here we are at the moon, so again, it's just another course correction here. I do like the graphics for these bits, they're really smart, I think. Very atmospheric. Right, it took too long there, I knew that was going to happen. So now we have to burn again. Right. So I think the graphics are great, um, speech is great, it really adds a lot of atmosphere. The sound effects themselves are a bit basic, but they do the job okay, I think. Uh, the gameplay, it's, it's its pretty frustrating at times. I mean, it's a fine balance between frustration and challenge. And this one verges more towards the frustration side of things. Especially the first stage. And you can see your scores and how well you're doing so far in the mission. So there, there's a bit of, um, even once you've completed all the missions, so there's a bit of replay value in just tr trying to get a better score. Yeah. And here we are in the lunar module now, ready to try and descend onto the moon's surface. What I'll do is uh, I'll just create another safe state here in the emulator just in case I screw it up. So it's quite a tricky stage as well. So power up the lunar module. Close the hatch. So we've climbed out the command module and we're now in the lunar module. And play the landing gear. And sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes it can, it can damage the lunar module depending on how roughly you docked, but it says it's okay here. And you've got to be careful when you land on the moon. If you, do, if you land too um, roughly, then uh, you might not be able to go out uh, onto the surface. Now you get three attempts at landing on the moon, uh, they're, they're called windows, you get three windows to try and land, uh, it's quite a tricky sequence. Right, so I think, yep, here we go. So it's a case of left and right to apply left and right thrust and fire to apply a bit of 
upward thrust. It's just trying to follow the trajectory of the green line and not straight outside. As soon as you straight outside the red lines, then that window will be abandoned. And I like the, the it's quite a simple effect, but I quite like the effect of the moon uh, on the on the right hand side there. Just trying to slow myself down a bit. Obviously, you've only got um, a limited amount of fuel as well, so if you waste too much fuel, uh, that's going to be a problem. Ah, oh, straight outside the window. So let's try the second one. So you can see it's quite a tricky stage. But it's really atmospheric, I think. Yeah, so let's get uh, some of the review on the way. Yeah, it's, so far it's mostly been uh, reaction um, sort of sequences rather than much skill. I mean, this one involves a bit of skill, to be fair. Too much for me, probably. Yep. <laughs> and I've been playing this game for a few weeks now, just, just trying to get ready to review it. Um, but I never had it back in the day. I remember seeing the review in Zap, thinking, well, it looks quite good, but I never managed to get my hands on it back in the day. And I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't. Right, I'll just reload my, my save state. I'll have another go. Uh, I'm glad I didn't, because uh, I would have had the cassette version, and uh, it's definitely not the way to play it. Trying to concentrate here. I've been playing it mostly on, on uh, my real. C64. And I think it's a bit easier on that game. I think you know, playing it on an emulator, there's a little bit of latency that can throw off the, the reaction uh, sequences. I think. Well, that's my excuse anyway for being rubbish. Right, I'll just. We're almost there. And the idea is not to land too roughly. Try and be gentle. You can also kill everybody on board. Oops. Yeah, if you land too roughly. Right, I think that was okay. Apollo has landed. So let's proceed to telemetry and see how we've gone. Right, so system's okay. So now we're ready to do a moonwalk, and all we have to do is it's a short walk to. Um, we've got to go to the Severe Three, which I think is the lunar rover that's out there somewhere. It's just a short walk to, towards it, then back, which is practicing it really. Oops. Uh, oops, wrong program. There we go. I think this this is a really absorbing game once you get, have enough practice at it and get into it. Um, it depends, obviously it depends if you like space uh, flight and interested in astronomy and things like that, but uh, I was back in the day. Um, yeah, so this is a tricky sequence. 
you've just got to move left and right to try and get your momentum up. It's really hard. And there's a little radar screen on the left, bottom left there. And you just push up and down to keep yourself aligned with the the trail. So I've got a bit of speed up now. Um, I'm doing quite well actually. Uh, I just need to move down a bit to... It's took me a, a while to, to become reasonably proficient at this sequence, he says, just uh, flogging his face. <laughs> I opened my mouth too soon. Uh, if, you, if you if you if you lands facing too far forward, then you fall over. Or if you land facing too far back, you lose a lot of momentum. Yeah. And you've got a limited supply of oxygen. You can see at the bottom there. Ah, it's really hard to get going again. Needs quite a lot of patience this and, and try not to rush things. Again, graphics are pretty smart, I think. Oops, I've strayed too far from the path. Story of my life. So here we are at the Severe 3. And there's no feedback or anything, you just stop dead. You can't go any further. It's just a case of turning around again. There's definitely a, a bit more skill involved in these screens than some of the other ones. Oh! I was hoping there might be some sort of easter egg and, and, and General Zod uh, and his minions might appear over the hill, but uh, <laughs> sadly not. Wanting to talk to the leaders of uh, Planet Houston. Oh, I've got, oh I was going to say I've got some great momentum here. That's obviously completely lost it. Come on! Yeah, so I may as well try and review a bit more of the game. So yeah, graphics I think are pretty smart. Atmospheric, sound is atmospheric as well. And it's, I think it's realistically as good as it could have been. Um, the gameplay, it's a mixed bag. Uh, some of the sequences, like the first one, are, are just too frustrating. Um, you know, I've played this game quite a lot now, and I still find it really hard. This stage is quite frustrating, but it's... It, it's still possible to complete. Um, obviously I'm not going to get a great score. Okay, I'm back. I'm not going to get a good score for that one, because I took too long. I think it's timed. But um, it's still possible to complete. Right, so here we are. Ready to take off. Uh, the gameplay, it's... Uh, yeah, it's a mixed bag. Uh, I, I, I wish the gameplay was a bit better. Uh, if you're not really interested in space flight and stuff like that, then obviously you, you're probably not going to look at this game anyway, but I don't think you would enjoy it um, as much. Um, but I find it quite absorbing.
Right, so here we are, ready to take off, I think. Just got to change something. Go. We're off. Nothing much to do in this stage, but I'm just press fire to be honest. Uh, but it's atmospheric. So here we are back at the telemetry screen again. And then, uh, you know, the Developers, I'll take really put a lot of research into this, I think. And for a 1987-88 game, uh, I think it's pretty ambitious to create a, a simulation that uh, you know, is, is detailed and um, as interesting as this. Okay, another docking scene. And these aren't particularly. I don't find these particularly hard. I think I'm tempting fate by saying that, probably, but. There we go. Okay, so we're. Heading back to the command module now. I think we've docked, we've come out the lunar module, back into the command module. I think I think they jettisoned the, the lunar module. And we're heading back towards Earth. And we don't land yet because uh, we can practice doing spacewalk. Uh, the idea is that there's uh, you, you just practice um, retrieving a satellite three times. But I think we've got a mid-course correction to do again. Which we've all seen before. Nope. I thought we had a mid-course correction, but not. Well, here we are. So, we're just waiting for the satellite to be released. There it is. And we just got to sort of maneuver our way towards it. Um, just rotate, press fire to thrust. Really, uh, and it's the cursor key is to move. You can see the bottom left there. There's uh, three axes, and the cursor keys move one of them. So I'm moving it now, so it's moving that one. Um, and then it's just the joystick for the other two axes. Once they're all green, you can press space to deploy your little arm and just try and press space to deploy the arm and just press fire to try and at the right time to try and grab onto that little purple spot. Not doing too well here. Last time I played it, I absolutely nailed this. Come on. Once you get to the edge of the screen, it just sort of flips its way onto the next screen. And these screens are really well drawn as well.
again, a bit more more skill involved in these screens than just there we go. Press space now to point back. A bit more skill involved in these screens than some of the other ones. So here we are on to the second one. See if I can do this one a bit more quickly. Also, uh, you can see at the bottom is time there. You get more points the, the quicker you do it. Let's click quick that one. Sound effects are limited to a bit of speech and uh, just a little bit of, sort of thrust sound effects and what do you expect is in space so it's not going to be particularly noisy. I, mean, I suppose they could have put some tense music in but I don't know whether that would have worked or not. Why can't I grab this one? Oh, I've not adjusted my third axis. There we go. There we go. Base walk complete. And it's time to head back. So yeah, this video has gone on a bit longer than I normally let them run, but uh, I wanted to try and show you as much of the game as possible. Because of the nature of the game, it's uh, it's quite hard to do that. Uh, I normally try and keep them at ten minutes, but this one's a bit longer, obviously. Right. Um, okay, another burn. Oh. Oh, uh, it's, I think I'm just getting tired from all the talking. Oh, well, I think uh, I'll just reload the safe state. Okay, <laughs> I don't want to run out of fuel. So I've come this far, I want to get to the end. So here we are. We're back in orbit now. Right, so this time... Um, in a close correction, I've got to burn again, another burn. Oh. So it can get a little frustrating. I think doing the whole mission on real hardware in one sitting is pretty tough. I mean, I'm, I'm making it easier for myself using the emulator and some safe states. But I think on real hardware, I, I've done it once. In fact, I'm not sure, I don't know if I did 
Yeah, I did do it once. Um, but other than that, I've, I've not always managed to do the moonwalk. Um, I've not always managed to do all the, the, the missions. But uh, I think only once I've done it. Uh, I'm just following the programs here. Right, this is where we have to just move the joystick up, down, left, right to keep the... You can see the, the red circle with the black crosshairs on it. Just got to keep that centred as much as we can. Every time it strays out, the whole temperature will rise and we risk burning up in the atmosphere. So, just trying my best to keep it centred. It's really hard. Again, this is quite an atmospheric scene, I love the... All the flames of the heat shield uh, outside the window. So sort of disappeared now, we're... Come on, we're in the atmosphere. Hopefully I've not strayed too far. I see it's off a bit now. It's not quite as wild, it does get quite wild. There. I don't know how exciting this video has been to watch, but it's been quite fun playing it. So, just jettison the heat shield and deploying the parachutes. Just about to land, I think. Splash down. Turn on the beacon, wait for the carrier to come and collect us. So now we can see how well we've, we've done. Um, so, final mission 63%. That's not too bad, so I've had worse. So it's. Um, I think my best was 70. Um, the moonwalk was the stage, that, and the yeah, course correction didn't do too well there. I must have used too much fuel, too many attempts on that course correction. Uh, but the, yeah, the moonwalk is a bit low as well. Um, and the mission control sequence, that's not... I used a safe state to cheat that one, didn't I? I, I <laughs> the original one, yeah, I didn't do very well on that one. That was so. I used a safe state for one of my more successful attempts. Uh, right, so let's press fire. Our carrier is on its way, and we get the American national anthem. And yeah, that's not the best. Picture I've seen. Uh, I guess if you squint your eyes, it does the job. Congratulations, Apollo. Good mission. Thanks very much. Let's return to, to your name. And here we go. Uh, and that's it. Uh, that's Apollo 18, Mission to the Moon. Uh, what do I think? Uh, well, I think it's a pretty good game. Uh, I, I think the, the frustration of certainly the first stage and, and maybe the, the uh, moon landing stage, uh, uh, certainly the frustration stops it being a great game, I think. Uh, uh, and the loading as well. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty intrusive. Uh, yeah, these things stop it being a great game. So I'll give it seven and a half out of ten. Um, it's a pretty good game, and uh, you've got, if you've got an interest in this sort of thing, definitely f find the manual online and uh, give it a go. Um, so 7.5 out of 10 for Apollo 18, Mission to the Moon, and see you in the next video.